Hey folks, welcome back to Gaming Garbage, where we take a look at games, chat about the gaming news in the industry, and of course, stream for fun. Today we're taking a look at PlayStation State of Play. This came out about a, probably about a week ago now, give or take a little bit, and we're basically getting a look at what they're expecting for the next six months, and also some announcements of some other games at the end of this year, or into 25, and even after into that, further into that, so even all the way into the next gen. So we're going to have to talk about all this. And we're going to go over, uh, I'm just going to go over my thoughts of each game that I saw. Um, I'm also going to go over um, what we got to see at the end for an exclusive for PlayStation. And then just my thoughts on the overall showcase. So let's go ahead and get into it. We saw Stellar Blade. This is coming out April 26, 2024. This is going to be an open world post-apocalyptic Earth where you're the character Eve to find an alpha of an alien race that's invading Earth. And you're basically going to kill it. That's the end. That's the whole premise right there. Most humans have fled at this point and formed a colony. And you're from a colony. You're from a special detachment of the military. And, and uh, you meet a few other people down the road. But, it, you know, the story is really going to show you the uh, uh, kind of the apocalyptic mess. You're going to have areas to, to, to uh, traverse and, and stuff. And, and bosses in the game as well, which is great. You're going to have upgrading uh, weapons and equipment or finding different stuff. Um, the, it's open world-ish, and I put it that way because in some of the trailer we got to see that some of the areas seem really kind of guided, like you're in a city or suburb or something like that. It's not going to be open world like we, like we think it is, kind of like Skyrim or maybe like Starfield or, or, um, or like Outer Worlds. It's, it might be a little more, uh, guided, uh, than that. There still might be a few places to explore, or things to do, but, um, yeah, it's not going to be quite as open world. The game itself, uh, looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, it looks really good. The cutscenes look great, and, uh, also quite flashy, since it is a Japanese game. Most of these ha definitely have the Japanese flair, since PlayStation is showing their coming exclusives, and, uh, and all of, most of those are, like, Japanese companies. So we're going to have side quests, we're going to have NPCs we interact with, again, boss battles. We're also going to have rest camps, so these are areas where you'll be able to buy some resources or you'll be able to kind of regain your health. So there's kind of like a level of survival elements to this, it looks like, uh, and these rest camps aren't going to be everywhere. We're going to have different biomes too, so we're going to have urban environments, we're going to have rural environments, we're going to have deserts, uh, so we can kind of expect that this game's actually probably going to be fairly long maybe like a final fantasy type um and uh you know now that i think of it it really kind of feels and plays like that maybe third person attacks all in real time so think of like final fantasy what are we on now 16 was the last one would have been last year and uh you're going to have different enemy types as well there's going to be aliens those robotics that used to be friendly but have broken down over time um, and there's going to be some different places to explore. So Stellar Blade actually looks pretty good. This is one that I highlighted that I would love to play myself. Never will, because uh, I don't have a PlayStation 5 right now, because, you know, money. It's as simple as that. Next, we're, uh, we got to see... Now, I'm not showing everything. I should probably preface that beforehand. But I'm not going to talk about everything, because some stuff was just kind of just, blur just blurred on the screen, and, and there really wasn't much about it. Plus, quite a few of those we've seen announcements for already last year, like during Summer Game Fest. So next was Silent Hill, The Short Message. Uh, this is actually available now. This is a first person um, where you seem to have your smartphone is like an important piece of equipment for yourself. Being able to provide light or maybe take pictures or save some information. Uh, the gameplay looked like you're exploring a maze. There's nothing really outside. Um... So even less than kind of a normal Silent Hill game for those of us that grew up with Silent Hill. There's really not a ton. So probably a pretty short game. The fact, too, that this is free makes me curious how they're making money off of this. And it's all in first person, so it's not like you're probably going to have skins or anything. Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't really sure what to uh, think about this one. Because, again, there's no business model uh, that we can see. And the game does look quite small, pretty simple, not a lot of replay value, but it is free. 
So hey, Silent Hill, the short message, you can check it out now. Definitely some jump scares, some some kind of environmental scares. Of course, I mean it's uh I mean it's Silent Hill. So been around forever. If you've never played Silent Hill, kinda think like um in a way Resident Evil kind of stuff, right? Some of the older Silent Hill players will totally agree with that. Some of the newer stuff, I mean they did some things for VR and some other things and you know, maybe some of that is of course a little different, but yeah, kinda think of like Resident Evil. It's pretty it's kinda yeah, it's pretty much the same. Uh, let's see, next we got to see Silent Hill 2 Remake. Uh, this is currently in development. Uh, remastered graphics, though the graphics didn't look great. Okay, this was not like a super stellar uh, graphical remaster. There were, some, there were some points where throughout the trailer it's like, mm, that could look a little better. Uh, Overall, it definitely looked like an improvement from the PlayStation 2 version, I must say. But, uh, but yeah, it didn't look um, amazing. You know what I mean? It didn't look amazing. Uh, Silent Hill 2 HD. Uh, I don't even know if that's still available. Again, I don't have a PlayStation, but they did have like a Silent Hill uh, HD collection. And I don't even know if that's available anymore or if that's even backwards compatible. If it is... Um, graphically, is it better than the HD collection for PlayStation 3? Some of the stuff on PlayStation 3 was pretty flippin' good. Some of the Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid, etc. And so, does this really warrant a, uh, a remake? Now, again, the original Silent Hill, you know, that's... If it's truly a remake where there's maybe some different stories, like, we got to see some different enemies. We didn't see the Pyramid Head, which he's iconic from Silent Hill 2. But, uh, but, yeah, again, the, eight, the HD collection was in 2012. So we're talking, you know, getting close to 14 years ago now. And uh, I just kind of want it's like the remastering it again. Why not just make a new Silent Hill game, okay? Not, not the short message type of game, but I mean a full-fledged game uh, that you've already remastered once. And, um, yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed by that. Again, we don't get three. We don't get some kind of a bundle collection thing. Again, the HD collection was just a couple of games, number one and three. But why remaster number two again? Uh, I don't know. I'm perplexed. Or why not bring it to Xbox, get more sales? You got an entire demographic of, you know, millions of people that would probably pay for Silent Hill collections because uh, they've only been on PlayStation. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, the Silent Hill stuff was, like, I was glad to see it, but it was just kind of weird a little bit. But yeah, if you've never played Silent Hill 2, this would basically play like Resident Evil 2. It's dark, there's monsters around, good luck. There's some puzzles to solve, etc. Next, we got to see Judas. This is also in development. Uh, think of this as basically a uh, child of Aftershock. So, we or Aftershock, excuse me, Bioshock. So we haven't seen any Bioshock for a long time. 3 was over like 10 years ago, I want to say, without looking it up. Um, but this has a Bioshock kind of background. Some people that I guess worked on Bioshock are a part of this project. Um, and, and it very much looks like Bioshock. I'm not even kidding. It's first person. You get like different elementals in your hand, you know, or like plasmids, whatever they called them back in Bioshock days. And then you have a weapon in your right hand. And you can alternate and that kind of stuff. And you work through this kind of screwed, excuse me, screwed world. So yeah, very Bioshocky, And it did look pretty good. I mean, graphically, it looked great. The sparks, the lighting, and everything. It looked really, really good. This was another one that I highlighted. Um, that would be probably worth looking into or worth waiting for. Next, we got to see some PSVR titles. Uh, we got Metro Awakening, which is coming sometime in 2024. We can probably expect that in the summer or maybe just before fall or right at the beginning because there's a lot of bigger stuff coming out at that point. There's also Legendary Tales. And, uh, you know, this was like another medieval title. Uh, pretty... I mean, both of them looked pretty good, especially Metro Awakening, actually. Uh, Metro Awakening looked great. 
uh, for a VR title. It looked really good. Um, and that probably would be fun, too, because there's kind of some sneaking around, and if you never played the Metros, uh, at some point you should. You should definitely put them on their list. They're pretty fun. Especially the third one, Metro Exodus. Uh, but yeah, Legendary Tales looked a little less graphical in quality. Um, but yeah, Legendary Tales is coming out really soon, February 8, 2024. So probably literally tomorrow uh, or a couple of days when this gets posted. But yeah, the PSVR titles, that kind of showed up and I was like, ah, you know, kind of mobile games. You know, that was just kind of my... Um, my feeling that I got as soon as I saw PSVR. Luckily, they didn't spend too much time on it. They just showed a couple that I remember uh, that were worth remembering. Yeah, PSVR, I don't know if that's a huge selling point because we haven't really seen any new sales numbers. Um, it hasn't really been talked about very much. And, you know, they they were expecting 2 million in sales and they got a little over 200,000. So little over 10% than what they were anticipating in a certain time frame within the first month or a couple of months. And yeah, I mean, if you have a PSVR, how do you like it? Uh, you know, let us know out here on the channel. Next, we got to see Dragon's Dogma 2. This is March 22nd, 2024. Not an exclusive. Uh, was actually very interested in this, very excited um, for you PlayStation folks. And then it's like, oh, it's not an exclusive. That's kind of weird. We're also getting this on Xbox. Same time, it's not timed exclusive. I think Sony's kind of done with that. I think they're figuring out their, their timed exclusivity has kind of run its course, and it's not really producing the amount of money that they would like. Um, you know, if people had both consoles, yeah, maybe they would buy the PlayStation version first instead of the Xbox version. But if you just have an Xbox, guess what? You're not going to buy it. It's going to come out later. PlayStation isn't really grabbing any extra sales that way. And if you have a PlayStation, well, you're going to just buy it anyway uh, when it's available. Or you'll wait for a sale or something like that. But yeah, their timed exclusivity, uh, a lot of this, a lot of it really wasn't um, announced, you know, to try to get people to buy a the next-gen PlayStation over the next-gen Xbox. Um, there's definitely other things to make PlayStation... Um, have some more pull in that department but yeah their timed exclusivity i think that's done i think they're just realizing it's not making it's really not making them any extra money and they're just burning it so at least they're figuring out stuff that's good next uh but yeah dragon's dogma 2 it did look really really good if you haven't seen a trailer for that i highly suggest it it'll get you motivated yeah it's coming out in a couple of months next is the rise of ronin this is also march 22nd 2024 this isn't exclusive um if you want a quick little breakdown of what it's like basically think of assassin's creed with sekiro gameplay and mechanics i mean that's literally the game with uh with players you have kind of like a stagger bar that you'll try to work up just like in sekiro and then with assassin's creed you have a grapple that you can just kind of hip hop scotch your way through everything um and there's definitely stealth mechanics in the game there's definitely um um you know sword play and and uh dynamic combat that you can do and there's also different tools and weapons you can have even a flamethrower which i think is sweet so this takes place in 1858 at the start of the game and this is kind of like traditional japan meets western ideals and this was actually a really tough time you had a division in culture there and a lot of people like forming to the west which you know if you've ever seen the last samurai is it really kind of shows a good kind of trait or picture of that and the government wanted to kind of you know allow more influence allow more trade and stuff like that and basically bring a better prosperity to japan um and also i think it was a uh, a way to kind of unify japan technically it was unified they did have a king but there were different groups that really didn't necessarily agree or see eye to eye on stuff and so you know bringing in a foreign goods and foreign influence and technologies and stuff was kind of a way to seem to to uh kind of unify japan but a lot of people of course didn't agree with it um ronin and samurai were uh, definitely one of them they they didn't want to have to you know change or whatever and the king of japan had to make a decision ultimately you know he was a child at the time of what who who we would see as a child and uh, or or an older kid 
Uh, but yeah, Rise of Ronin takes place in that time period, so uh, it would be an interesting place to explore. There are different cities to explore. It's not like an open world. I didn't get that sense. It's more like, look, here's an area to explore. Though we have seen some screenshots, and we have seen some concept art where it shows, you know, them looking over an area that's pretty vast, pretty big, that's got some buildings, that's got some plains or mountains. So maybe it is an open world, actually. That would be really cool. That would be pretty sweet. Kind of like a Sekiro, where you have kind of blocked sections, and you can travel from, you know, A to B or B to C and get to the next area and then get killed over there. So Rise of Ronin looked really good. Open world areas, you have a grapple and you have a glider to, to basically quickly travel around, which is nice. A range of weapons and tools, uh, including firearms, because uh, that was introduced to them in the 1800s and yeah this is following the story of the 1800s um, and the wars that they had in Japan um, toward the end almost at the turn of the century so it looks very interesting uh, again this is March 22nd this is probably out of all of them this is probably the one that I would buy uh, and actually play first because it's really the only one coming out as far as we know this year a lot of other stuff is in development or 2025 kind of a bummer so next is Until Dawn. So this came out in PlayStation 4. Uh, so it's been a while, of course. This, uh, this came out 2015. Uh, Until Dawn is going to be a remaster that's coming out sometime in 2024. And if you want to think of Until Dawn, kind of think of the quarry. It's kind of more like a story where you get to make choices during the story. Uh, it's not like full gameplay, all right? It's not some crazy open world whatever. Uh, kind of, yeah, kind of think of it as more like a story, and you get to watch on how the decisions you've made affect the ending. Is it exactly like that? Probably not. I haven't played Until Dawn. Again, I don't have a PlayStation right now. Uh, but again, it's another remaster. It's like, seriously? It's like, uh, well, I'll get into that. I'll get into that. Next was Death Stranding 2. So we finally have an official trailer. Uh, the main protagonist, the actor, I forget his real name. He basically uh, leaked something in, like, 2022 that Death Stranding 2 was coming, which was pretty hilarious. Or maybe it was 2023. It was sometime in there. So we kind of knew it was coming at some point. And, uh, and yeah, this will be coming out in 2025. Visually, it looks really, really good. Uh, we're going to have different biomes this time. We're going to have expansions to the story. You're going to be, be a part of a crew of a little ship, pretty much. And you're going to be exploring and helping connect... Not just now the United States, but now actually the world. You're going to help connect the world and try to like um, continue to save humanity. We got to see there's some vehicles for travel this time, which is great. We're also going to have a further reaching of enemies to deal with. Um, it looks like, but again, it's still a lot of running. Okay, there's there's going to be a lot of a lot of traveling and stuff. And so, if you really enjoyed Death Stranding. Uh, you're probably going to like this one with the improvements um, and added features to the game. But yeah, it'll definitely expand the story, flesh out more characters. Um, there were some interesting parts to the trailer. There was a ship that came out of a baby's mouth, which was kind of weird. And then there was a robotic samurai versus a guitar hero player, basically. <clears throat> and it was a bit much, so it's definitely a Japanese game. Uh, but yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit much for me. It's just kind of interesting. I, I haven't, again, I haven't played Death Stranding. I know nothing about the story or the characters. Uh, just what I've said here on the channel. Um, but yeah, if you're into Death Stranding, you know, it does look pretty good. Uh, they're, they're going in a direction that's great for the IP. Lastly, we got to see something from Kojima Productions. And he's renowned for the stuff that he's been involved with, like with Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid, which is great. Um, but yeah, we got to see something with Kojima Productions. It's a new IP. Um, officially, from what I've been able to gather, there's no name. There's kind of a nickname floating around. Um, but we know that this is a next-gen title espionage game. So that would make it PlayStation 6. Uh, which PlayStation 6 announced that it'd be like 2027, uh, 2028 when the next gen would actually come out. 
Now, we know PlayStation and Xbox are in a little bit of a hot war right now. There's a lot of information floating out there between the companies because of the courts and because of a hack. I will be going over that later this month um, as a new state of gaming. But, uh, but, yeah, the fact that they're announcing a new game this early, uh, again, is just weird. Unless PlayStation is pushing up their timeline to release the next-gen console, which I wouldn't see why. I mean, we're getting a refresh this year, both from Xbox and from PlayStation. Anyway, like, we just got the Slim, whatever. And then Xbox is going to have a refreshed version, uh, I think, later. I think it's later this year. Um, and then the next gens are supposed to come at the end of the decade. So yeah, why announce one this early uh, to get people psyched? I don't know. I would have waited at least a couple more years. Uh, like 2026. Be like, hey, this is coming out. This is going to be exciting. That would really get people pumped. But the fact that people now have to wait so long uh, may not be that exciting when it actually shows up. We also didn't get a trailer. Uh, it's literally just Kojima coming out talking about the game. Uh, with what he could talk about. There's NDAs, which are frustrating. This is going to be an exclusive. Um, and again, but this this feels a lot kind of like Xbox's exclusive OD. Uh, Kojima mentioned that this is going to be a game, but there's going to be a large focus on music and audio, and it, also it's going to include kind of movie elements to the game, which exactly is what OD kind of looked like and sounded like. Um... Kojima did say that this feels like a culmination of his career of almost four... I think it's about 40 years now. Which is insane. Uh... Well, I don't think he's that old. I mean, he's an older guy. Well, yeah, he has been making Metal Gear for quite a while. Anyway, um, when this comes out, it'll be like a culmination of his career. Which would put him around 40 years in the industry at this point. Um, this will be an interactive game, uh, but again, the play styles could be totally different, so we'll have to see uh, it when we actually see a trailer and get more information. But yeah, again, this does feel like Xbox's OD. It's the same type of project. Uh, a game, uh, an interactive game with music and focus on audio, but also movie elements as well. So it's kind of interesting. He's doing, you know, he's making two different exclusives uh, at different times. OD is probably going to come out in 25, is my guess. Uh, or maybe around 26, depending. Uh, and we, But we did get to see a little bit more information on OD than with this next project exclusive for PlayStation. But I think it's interesting he's making exclusives from both consoles. And either way, he's going to make a lot of money. He knows that his name has a certain reputation. And that's why he's been able to start Kojima, Kojima Productions in the first place with all of the money that he's made. And now he's just making his own IPs. And good for him. Honestly, he's he's going to rake in the cash, no doubt. So that's the overall thing of the showcase. I'm going to go over the thoughts that I had. Um, basically, it was a little too long. It wasn't as long this time as one of the others. It was narrowed down to about 42 minutes, which was nice. 45 minutes. Um, so it's the previous one was like 110 minutes or something like that, which was uh, which was definitely too long. Things weren't very flashy in this one. It was just very much to the next uh, to the next trailer or Kojima coming out on stage to talk about stuff. It went or it ticked along really really well. There were four main exclusives. There was Stellar Blade, Ronin, Judas, and Death Stranding 2. And then we did get an announcement of Kojima Productions' new IP. Um, but like a lot of stuff that they showed too, they kind of had like a quick flash presentation of different, of some different trailers and games. And again, we just like, we've already known about those, or at least most of those. Um, it's really not going to bring anything new to the table. And again, they're coming. We, some of those, we didn't even really have anchored down dates yet. They're still coming out this year or maybe even in 25. And it's like, it's just kind of felt like a waste of time. It's like, okay, you're showing us again this type of stuff, and you still don't have a date nailed down. It's just kind of weird. There's actually a lot of stuff like that for Summer Game Fest. And I wonder if it'll be like that again coming this year. With Kojima's announcement for his new IP, it just felt, okay, it's next-gen PlayStation 6 game. Uh, it, is it too early to announce that? 
again, 27, 28 is about when this is going to come out. Uh, and it sounds like it's going to be a launch title, which is great. Um, PlayStation, uh, you know, any launch title will help PlayStation and or Xbox when it's exclusive. But I don't know. I just feel like it's way, way too early. Again, it's kind of like Elder Scrolls 6. I feel like Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be a launch title for for Xbox. And again, that's 27, 28. That is a long time from now, folks. A lot can happen in just three or four years. Uh, the other thing was like the VR titles. Um, just not very interested. Uh, it's it's uh, not something a lot of people have to begin to begin with. There's also not a lot of titles either to really you know produce the price point of five hundred dollars for a PlayStation VR headset. Um, I've heard they're nice, but again, if you don't have a lot of games for it, kind of what's the point? And again, these games, um, due to liability possibilities, they're small. They're they're not huge, and it's like now we got to pay you know forty to sixty dollars for these VR games uh, that are going to be short lived, that aren't going to have a lot of replayability, and that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. And then also Silent Hill: The Message, great. We got something finally new for Silent Hill, but this is not the game that we wanted. It's kind of what I was talking about in gaming news about Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. We wanted a new one. There's also supposed to be a remaster of Prince of Persia, the original. But again, it's like we don't have it. It's like we don't have it. We don't have any remaster at all. And then looking at the Prince of Persia game, The Lost Crown, that's not the type of game that we wanted. So the people that have bought it, okay, it's gotten high praise on Metacritic. It's great. You know, it's up in the 80s for Pete's sakes, but they're touting that, ooh -hoo, in, uh, you know, two weeks, uh, we've made 300000 in sales. Folks, that's nowhere near enough money uh, with $15 million in revenue if everybody bought it at the MSRP. That's not anywhere near enough revenue to cover the budget for the game. The budget was $100 million. And again, with Silent Hill, the message, are a lot of people going to buy this? Probably buy it on sale. Right? Because, again, the replay value isn't going to be very good. It's going to be short. Uh, kind of think of, like, the back rooms for, on PC. Think of something like that. Where, you know, you're kind of running through this maze. maze you're trying to avoid enemies or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, this is, again, this is just not the type of Silent Hill game that we wanted. I mean, in my opinion, Resident Evil is doing a better job of producing games that we want than Silent Hill right now. And then the remaster. It's like, okay, great. You're going to remaster this a second flipping time, Silent Hill 2. Why are you doing this? Just shove your money, put those two studios together, and create an actual new full-fledged IP uh, or, or an addition to Silent Hill or make some other IP that's a horror, haunting, whatever. Maybe it's got ghosts instead of virus-filled folks or or possessed whatevers. Why not actually just make an actual game that we'd like to pay 70 bucks for instead of a remaster, instead of, you know, a short kind of oval VR mobile game like The Message. It's just, it's just frustra frustrating. And then the other remake that we had was Until Dawn. And it's like, folks, we already had a remaster just released of The Last of Us Part 2. That was a remaster too. And in my opinion, they're doing too many remasters right now. I'm not interested in remasters. I want new stuff to play. The fact that it's got higher fidelity and ray tracing, that's cool. But being an older guy, I actually grew up with new story additions to an IP or to a franchise, which I was more excited about. I'm not interested as much in the graphics. I mean, I played on 8-bit NES. And some, some of us others did too, right? Or maybe even the Atari or the Commodore, okay? Some of us played on some of that stuff, and we enjoyed some of those games. The Tomb Raider series, 1, 2, 3, which 4 should be freaking in there, you Mother Hubbards, that's coming as a remaster collection to Xbox, and I think PlayStation as well. And it's $30! Huh! <laughs> it's 30 bucks. Again, is it going to be like amazing interstellar graphics? No! It's going to be like PlayStation 2 graphics, right? There you know her 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 chest aren't going to be these cones. It's going to be actual shapely 
uh, a shapely chest, you know, and there's going to be some other improvements, um, you know, graphically speaking, but you can tell it's like, yeah, the graphics in today's standards are going to absolutely suck. And that's why it's 30 bucks and you get three games. And, you know, that I'm okay with that type of a remaster. I'm excited. I pre-ordered it or re already. I had some Xbox points from doing the whole Bing thing and Game Pass thing. I had enough points, so I got $10 credit, so I bought it. Plus, they have a discount right now before it comes out, so I bought it for $17. Frick yeah, folks, you can barely get a meal for $17, bucks, and I'm getting three games for that? Frick yeah, I'm going to have it right here on the channel. I'm excited. But again, the remakes and the remasters, it's like, we're not even asking for this. Silent Hill 2, who's, who's thought of Silent Hill 2? When we already had an HD collection, when it was technically remastered about 10 years ago for the PlayStation 3. What about The Last of Us Part 2 remaster? They literally could have delayed the game a few months, built it in a different engine, made it for the PlayStation. Made it a flippin' launch title for the PlayStation 5. It came out Last of Us Part 2 came out five months before the launch of the PlayStation 5. And I think they knew, hey, we can just, uh, you know, Naughty Dog knew we can remaster this a few years in and just get more money for it. And again, the stuff that they added was stuff that was taken out of the original game. At least that's the rumor mill anyway. And uh, so, and then Until Dawn, most of us don't even know what that is. They're focusing too much on remakes, folks. That's my opinion. They need to make real games like Rise of Ronin, uh, Judas, and Stellar Blade. Those are the kind of games that I'm excited for because they're new. They're worth my time and money. So it was nice. It was more streamlined in the showcase. It was a little shorter. I give this showcase a C+. Um, it's definitely better than their last one last year. Um... But yeah, still there was some fluff. The focus of the remakes, PSVR, that stuff didn't need to be in here. Um, most of us aren't interested in that type of stuff. It, or it's cool for what it is, but it's like I'd rather see more exclusive IPs that are new. And all we're getting is Stellar Blade, Judas, Rise of Ronin, Death Stranding 2 next year, and then a project in like 2027 from Kojima Productions. So basically, there's three games. Like, they could have showed three games uh, and Dragon's Dogma 2 felt it just a little out of place, but why not? They could have shoved that in there, too. But, like, that was the state of play, and it's just not its just not very good. It's definitely better. That's why I'm giving it a C. But, uh, you know, like Xbox Direct, watching that one, that's also on my channel, too, folks. If you go to YouTube at GamingGarbage22 and type in or just click on the videos tab and scroll down. You'll see it. It wasn't too long ago. Or maybe I'll just add it to this one. Um, I'll probably do that. But, you know, directors... Um, Xbox... Yeah. Xbox Direct. We just had five games. They were exclusives. The studios were able to talk about their game and show their game. And that got me more excited for other titles out there. You know? Gave me an idea of kind of what things looked like. And, and that was good. Like, the Indiana Jones game? woo -hoo -hoo, Let's go, man. Also, Aura for PC also looked really, really good. I wish I could actually play that on my console. And, uh, and then we had Avowed, which looked all right. Didn't look great, but still looked pretty good. Um, didn't get as much flushed out there as I was hoping. But I'm a lot more interested in these titles than I would be for a lot of this stuff, because a lot of these didn't get a lot. Rise of Ronin got a lot, Dragon's Dogma got a lot, and so did Stellar Blade and Death Stranding 2. I am more excited for those, because that was actually flushed out with the story. But, like, with the Xbox showcase, okay, we didn't have any remasters. We didn't have any future projects from years from now. Uh, they literally just talked about what's coming. And the great thing, too, is... Uh, we're almost all of the games said for one on Xbox Showcase. They're all coming to Game Pass, so I don't have to pay three hundred bucks uh, for four games. I, I I can just I can just buy Game Pass, which is when you rip out the multiplayer bit of it, you know, of gold. 
I'm paying a hundred and forty dollars for three hundred dollars worth of games. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love it. I love that. PlayStation, you need to get your stuff together. Anyway, that's the state of PlayStation. The state of play. You guys have some do good stuff that's coming. I wish I could play some of these. Absolutely. Um, and they definitely had a better showcase. But what do you guys think? Are, I mean, are you kind of interested now? Do you feel like the tension between Xbox and PlayStation are kind of ramped up at this point? I certainly do. We're going to talk about that in a state of game, two state of gamings, actually. There's so much content there. I'm going to break it up for you all. But hopefully you guys are doing well. Stay active out there. And, uh, you know, keep working on those goals. They're, they're honestly important to have. And until next time, I'll see you on the next one.